Kuwait City In Kuwait City, summer is no longer a season, it's the climate itself. Thermometers break past 52 degrees Celsius, 126 degrees Fahrenheit. Asphalt ripples like water, the horizon trembles under the weight of light, glass towers shimmer and the air grows thick, a heat so physical it presses against skin like glass. Oil once made this desert rich, now it makes the desert angry. Refineries glow through the night, their chimneys writing stories of fire across the sky. Scientists warn that by the end of this century, Kuwait could pass the wet bulb limit of 35 degrees Celsius, a line where sweat stops saving you, where air itself turns against the human body. Outdoor workers hide under cloth and faith. Digital billboards flash to avoid noon sun, Life retreats underground, into malls, basements, cooled corridors. A city built on oil now burns in the gift it gave the world, and the wind that once whispered across the gulf now returns carrying only heat. But the world doesn't cool as it moves west. It only changes shape. The same sun waits on another continent, this time above America's desert of ambition. Phoenix Phoenix was born to love the sun. Now it fears its embrace. In 2023, the city endured 31 consecutive days above 43 degrees Celsius, 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Concrete sizzled, airports closed, runways too soft to hold planes, cacti bleached white beneath unrelenting light. Every summer, the heat wave returns sooner, stays longer, leaves deeper scars. More than 600 people died in one season. The poor, the homeless, the forgotten. At midnight, Asphalt still breathes 60 degrees Celsius from below. Fans churn the same hot air in circles. Hospitals run out of IV bags before sunrise. Phoenix was designed to sprawl. Wide roads, pale roofs, endless driveways reflecting glare into glare. Now the sprawl cooks itself. Concrete absorbs light by day and exhales it by night, a furnace that never truly shuts down. Average temperatures have risen 3 degrees since 1970. And still, the city grows. New suburbs pushing deeper into the desert, each new street has another radiator under the sky. Engineers paint roads white, build shaded walkways, test cool pavements that bounce heat back to space. But each fix is a bandage on a living wound. The sun rises again and Phoenix learns. Too much light can blind even the city of light. Yet across the ocean, another capital burns differently. Delhi. Delhi breathes fire through dust. The city wakes in smoke, sleeps in haze. In 2024, thermometers screamed 49.9 degrees Celsius, the hottest day ever recorded in India's capital. The sky dimmed with smog, the streets shimmered like mirrors holding the sun. When darkness comes, the heat refuses to leave. Walls radiate warmth, fans move air but not comfort. Night becomes only a slower version of day. Delhi's shape traps its own suffering. Concrete replaces trees, traffic knots the air, pollution builds a dome, a lid of heat pressing everything beneath it. Water scarcity deepens the crisis. People line up before dawn, hoping pipes still run. Power grids collapse under the hum of a million air conditioners. The poor sleep under tin roofs that sing when the sun hits them. The rich hide behind tinted glass that reflects the same sky. Delhi's average summer temperature has climbed 1.7 degrees Celsius, in four decades. Its nighttime heat climbs faster. The city never truly cools, never truly rests. For centuries, Delhi survived empires. Now it fights a new conqueror. Not invader, not weapon, just heat. And as the monsoon clouds roll east, they find a capital even more humid, a city that doesn't burn, it steams. Dhaka. Dhaka feels like breathing through cloth. Moisture clings to skin, turning every step into labor. Here, wet bulb readings reach 32 degrees Celsius, dangerously near the threshold where survival breaks. In 2023, Bangladesh saw its hottest march in 75 years. Slums built from corrugated metal act as amplifiers for the sun. By afternoon, roofs glow red. By night, they still burn. The air never forgets the day. Fans spin endlessly, but move nothing. Electric demand rises until the grid snaps. Blackouts arrive like clockwork, and hospitals light wards with generator fumes. Dhaka once floated on rivers, cool, breathing waterways. Now they're filled, paved, buried under cement. Rain hits the ground and turns instantly to vapor. 
Relief lasts seconds. Every year, the city loses work hours, crops, and strength to heat. Factories shorten shifts, rickshaw pullers faint by noon. Climate cost here is measured not in money, but in exhaustion. And yet, the people adapt, moving at dawn, working by night, surviving between storms. South of here, the same desert sun that cooked Kuwait now sweeps inland again to a kingdom built from glass and steel, where modernity itself stands on the edge of fire. Riyadh. Riyadh rises from sand like a mirage, a city of symmetry and sun. But the mirage has heat lines in it. By midday, the capital touches 48 degrees Celsius. Sandstorms mix with sunlight, painting the sky orange. The air carries no moisture, no mercy. Half a century ago, Riyadh was a cluster of markets. Today, it's a crown of skyscrapers. But the desert never signed a peace treaty. More than 40 days each year now cross 46 degrees Celsius. Dust covers solar panels. Water vanishes before it meets soil. The city runs on air conditioning, a fragile heartbeat powered by oil. Nearly 70% of its electricity now goes to cooling. Scientists measure a 2.2 degrees Celsius rise since the 1980s. Projections whisper of 55 degrees Celsius heat waves by 2070. To fight back, the city builds shaded boulevards, designs mirrored buildings to deflect the glare. But each new defense consumes more power, and the circle closes tighter. Riyadh glitters at night, its skyline a constellation of defiance. But the lights themselves radiate heat into the dark. And when the sun returns, the wind carries the same warmth eastward. Toward the Arabian Sea, to a port city where humidity kills faster than drought. Karachi. Karachi once slept under cool sea winds. Now even the wind is missing. In 2015, a single heat wave claimed 1,200 lives in six days. Hospitals overflowed, morgues ran out of room. Since then, summer has felt like revenge. Temperatures hover near 44 degrees Celsius, but humidity lifts the real feel beyond 50. The body can't cool, the air won't move. Fans spin into silence when the power grid collapses. High-rises choke the old sea breeze. Concrete sprawl replaces trees with heat traps. Tin roof homes store sunlight like batteries discharging it into the night. Meteorologists track a steady 1.5 degrees Celsius rise since 1980. A climb small on paper, massive in flesh. For the wealthy, air conditioners run all day. For the poor, wet sheets and open rooftops are the only defense. Karachi emits barely 0.2% of global carbon, yet pays the price of continents. Its injustice isn't hidden. It's visible in every heat haze above its skyline. Still, the city moves. Markets open before dawn, when the air is bearable. Fishermen set out under red skies, chasing cooler water. And when the first light hits the harbor, the wind stirs. Weak, reluctant, but still alive. The breeze returns for a moment. Then the sun climbs again, and the cycle, the same one that binds every city in this story, starts over. Lagos. The story shifts west, to the edge of the Atlantic, to a city that never sleeps and rarely cools. Lagos, Nigeria, a population beyond 23 million and a skyline made of metal and mirrors. Here, the air itself feels crowded. Average temperatures climb half a degree every decade, faster than the global mean. Humidity hangs above the lagoon like fog that forgot to move. Nights remain above 30 degrees Celsius, the heat never fully leaving the day behind. Markets open before sunrise to dodge the worst hours. By noon, the streets shimmer, and even the shade feels heavy. Diesel generators hum through the night, spitting exhaust into air that can barely breathe. In 2024, hospitals reported record heat stroke cases. Children fainted in classrooms, workers collapsed at bus stops. Trees fall one by one to construction, and each one taken adds a degree to the city's pain. Lagos emits little, yet suffers much. Climate justice here isn't theory, it's temperature. And as the city swelters under inequity and expansion, the camera pans north where another ancient city now faces the same furnace from the desert itself. Cairo. Cairo was built by the Nile, nourished by its rhythm, cooled by its flow. But the river runs thinner now, and the desert presses closer each year. Daytime temperatures push past 45 degrees Celsius. Sandstorms drift through six-lane highways, turning the air golden and opaque. Buildings of limestone and dust store the sun like vaults. At sunset, 
Heat releases in waves. The city glows from within, not from lamps, but from what it absorbed all day. The Nile no longer calms Cairo, rising heat, shrinking flow. Two crises intertwined like the city's own streets. Air conditioning units hang from every balcony, spilling hot air into alleys below. Egypt's Ministry of Environment calls it the Desert Squeeze. The Sahara expands, Cairo urbanizes, the space between vanishes. For millions who cannot afford constant cooling, relief becomes luxury. And still, life doesn't stop. Markets stay open after midnight, mosques fill before dawn. Faith becomes a kind of air, the only cool thing left to breathe. From here, the heat drifts north again, crossing the sea into Europe, to the continent that once imagined itself safe from extremes. Athens. Athens has seen every kind of empire, but not this, a siege of heat. The Acropolis gleams under 46 degrees Celsius light. Tourists stumble beside marble columns too hot to touch. Streets echo with the hum of air conditioning in cicadas. The city's stones remember glory, and now, temperature. Once symbols of culture, they've become mirrors for the sun. Athens is Europe's hottest capital. Heat waves arrive earlier, linger longer, and kill quietly. Mostly the elderly, mostly unseen. After the deadly wave of 2021, the city appointed the world's first chief heat officer, an official job to manage temperature. Fountains turn public again. Schools add shaded courtyards and rooftops grow white to reflect the sky. It's a city fighting physics with paint. From the cradle of democracy to the cradle of heat management, Athens adapts, but every degree gained by science is stolen back by the sun. The same wave rolls west, over mountains and plains, toward a land where summer now arrives early and overstays. Spain's heartland. Madrid. Madrid has always been dry. Now it's turning arid. The city sits on a plateau once cooled by mountain winds. Those winds still come, but they bring warmth instead of chill. In 2023, Madrid hit 44 degrees Celsius, and the word cala became less a description, more a warning. Summer nights stay above 26 degrees Celsius, a new category meteorologists call tropical nights. Europe is warming twice as fast as the rest of the planet, and Madrid sits near the center of that spiral. Olive orchards brown at the edges. Water reservoirs drop to record lows. The government declares heat emergencies each season now, and trains are painted white to survive rail deformation. Yet people still fill the plazas, still sip espresso under umbrellas that melt at their tips. This is Europe's new identity. Sunlight no longer a blessing, but a burden that defines modern life. As Madrid bakes, the story crosses north, toward the romantic city of rivers and rooftops, where the light that once inspired artists now sends people indoors. Paris. Paris, the city of light. And now the city of heat. In 2003, a historic heat wave killed 15,000 people across France. At the time, it was called a once-in-a-century event. Twenty years later, it happens every few summers. The Seine runs low, its bridges glowing in air, thick with haze. Cafes close midday, and the metro tunnels feel like sealed ovens. The charm of Paris hides a modern fragility. Tight buildings, narrow streets, few trees to shade the stones that carry centuries of sun. Urban planners fight back rooftop gardens, misting stations, reflective facades. But history itself traps heat. Old architecture was made for winters that no longer come. July 2022 saw 41 degrees Celsius in the city, record-breaking for a place built around romance and rain. Now the same cafes serve iced water beside espresso, and love letters smell faintly of sunscreen. From here, the heat drifts north again, crossing the channel into a land once mocked for its grey skies, where even clouds can't hide the new truth. London. London was supposed to be safe. A city of drizzle, fog, and cool understatement. That story ended in July 2022, when the temperature hit 40.3 degrees Celsius, the hottest day in the history of Britain. Train tracks bent runways melted at homes, built for damp cold, turned into traps for heat. The city's brick walls kept warmth like gilt. Fans sold out within hours, parks turned brown, and the Thames shimmered under smoke. Scientists at the UK Met Office say Britain's average summer temperature has risen by 1.7 degrees Celsius since the 1970s, with heat waves becoming five times more frequent. 
Londoners now measure summer not by festivals or fashion, but by heat warnings. Schools shorten hours. Hospitals open cooling wards. The irony is poetic. A city once powered by coal now burns under sunlight. As the lens turns southward again past oceans and equators, we reach a continent where summer never ended. But now, it's rewriting itself entirely. Where heat isn't a season anymore, it's the new reality burning city by city. Stay till the end to see if your city's next.